stress when it's acute when it's in short bursts that's something our body can manage but when it's chronic when we feel like we're constantly being chased by a tiger but it's not our tiger it's our work deadlines it's our school deadlines it's tasks at home it's cleaning it's cooking it's everything piling up that's when it becomes a problem and leads to dis-ease in the body adrenals 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 today we are discussing a topic that is near and dear to my heart we're going to be talking about cortisol we are going to be talking about our body's stress response we are going to understand how that relates to our hormones and symptoms of a hpa axis that has dysfunction so what the heck is adrenal fatigue what can we do about it? These are things that we will be discussing in this video. Hi, I'm Hormone Balance Coach Ginnan, and this channel is dedicated to empowering women to live their most vibrant lives through hormone harmony. Now, I am not one who is unfamiliar with having fatigued adrenals, which is a very controversial term because the medical community does not accept the term. Rather, Another term for it would be HPA axis dysfunction, HPA meaning hypothalamic pituitary adrenals. The connection from our brain to our adrenal glands that sit in front of our kidneys where cortisol is created and released from our body. The last few years, let's think COVID, let's think even now with everything that's going on around us, all of our external influences, they impact us directly right over here. And there is one hormone that allows us to interact with our external environment in particular. And this hormone is cortisol. So when our body receives a signal from our external world that shifts us into our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight, not to be mistaken with our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest, our brain sends a signal to our adrenal glands to secrete cortisol. This takes about 10 minutes to do, and what happens as a response to this is that our blood sugar rises. So in a situation where you just get a message from your boss, you've got a deadline in eight hours. This is perfect. It gets you going. But what if this is a message that you're receiving on a daily basis, right? Same idea between being chased by a bear or a tiger as our ancestors would have. But nowadays, it's not the bear or tiger. It's getting stuck in traffic. It's, it's our kids. It's the state of the world and feeling anxious about it. There's stress. There's perceived stress. We'll talk about that too. And how your brain doesn't realize the difference between a thought in your head versus it actually happening in real life. You might not have that much going on, but if up here, your thoughts are telling you, oh my God, my friends hate me, I'm the worst, no one loves me. Whether it's true or not, you are going to feel that impact. Your body sure as heck is going to feel it. Now, cortisol is very important for our body. It's what gets us up in the morning. It's what gets us going. What happens is if the pathway between your brain and adrenals is constantly being stimulated, meaning it becomes inefficient due to constant stimulation, that's where we'll see issues of HPA axis dysregulation. And we're going to be discussing ways to support HPA axis dysregulation in this video. The difference between adrenaline versus cortisol is adrenaline is pre-made and stored in our body. It does not need 10 minutes, it works right away. Cortisol, we need it every single day. In fact, our body has a diurnal pattern that cortisol follows day by day by day. Now, if both of these, you're going back and forth, back and forth all day long, your body is going to wear down because what cortisol does is it breaks down the body go straight to our tissues typically to increase your blood sugar levels. And you can't be breaking down your body while repairing it, while having cells look for bad guys in your gut, look at your digestion, look at your reproductive system. None of that's happening. None of that healing, that repair can happen at the same time as cortisol does its thing. Now, we'll also discuss testing. What I often see with clients who have high cortisol is that they have low DHEA. So it suppresses their DHEA. And if you suppress DHEA, you also suppress testosterone and estradiol. Now let's discuss some symptoms 
of HPA axis dysregulation. The first one is that you go to bed, you get your eight, nine hours, and when you wake up in the morning, you're like dragging yourself out of bed. It is difficult and you don't understand why because you got your sleep. Another is that you're always feeling anxious. Throughout your day, you have this impending anxiety. Depression is another symptom. You could be feeling wired all the time. You know you're exhausted, your body's exhausted, but when you go to lie down at bed at night, your brain is just on and you can't fall asleep. Another symptom is gaining weight, particularly around your midsection. Grabbing coffee, you're on your second, your third, your fourth cup of coffee. You're craving something salty or sweet in the afternoons to, as a pick-me-up, right? Your blood sugar is not regulated either. Now, I need to discuss things that we can do. One test that can be done is a saliva test, and it's you measuring your saliva four times during the day because cortisol has a normal pattern that it should be going down. In the morning, about half an hour after you wake, it should peak, right? This is what's going to get you started, kickstarted during your day. This is important. Afternoon, it should drop. In the evening, it gets lower. Before bed, it should be at your lowest point so that you can get a good night's sleep. And so a saliva test has you get your saliva during these four main markers during your day and compare it to what a normal healthy cortisol pattern looks like. And that first marker is your cortisol awakening response. That's what it's called. Hormones, they're built off of two things, cholesterol and our B vitamins. There are things that deplete our B vitamins. If you are under such a high amount of stress, alcohol is not going to be supportive to you. That's going to mess with your blood sugar. So I'm going to start off, number one, with diet. Things you can do with your diet to support this. And it's to have quality protein, quality fat at every single meal and fiber. What this is going to do is going to ensure that you don't have those big spikes in your blood sugar level and big drops. Because when you're fatigued, when your body's fatigued, you're going to see blood sugar imbalance issues all over the place. And diet, you hear it everywhere, but it plays such a key role. I cannot emphasize it enough. There are foods that are going to be pro-inflammatory and they're going to stress your body out. Seriously, this happens. There are foods that can trigger anxiety in your body, such as your dairy, such as your gluten, such as coffee. These are food items and you need to be noticing your triggers when it comes to this. Next, your B vitamins. I talked about how that is necessary to make your steroid hormones. So taking a B vitamin supplement is an option as well. I also want to talk about our adaptogens. They kind of get you to a midpoint. And so some great options for adaptogens, we've got ginseng, we've got ashwagandha. Now, just because I'm mentioning an adaptogen does not mean that it's going to work well with you. See how it works for your body. Notice how your body reacts. Holy basil, dulce. We also need to be talking about sleep. So whether that's shifting your sleep environment, putting lights away before bed, having a routine. It does not need to be a hour-long sleep bedtime routine, but a couple of things to let your body know, hey, it is time to wind down. Magnesium. When you're stressed, your body literally burns through magnesium. I have a whole short form video about types of magnesium that I will link below to help you out mindfulness activities will help you because when you give your body five, 10 minutes here and there to genuinely rest and repair and get into your parasympathetic nervous system, this is this is what your body needs, especially if you're at the point where your adrenals, your thyroid, it all needs extra love. So whether this is going for a walk, whether this is journaling, I'm doing a 10-day Vegas nerve challenge over on my Instagram where we're stimulating our vagus nerve every single day I show up in my stories so come join us there for that I hope that this was helpful for you please drop a like so that more people can find it subscribe to our community we're all about health and wellness and follow me over on my instagram where I share daily hormone content as always 
I'm sending you so much love wherever you are. Bye-bye. I want to know your name. Baby, you're bubbly and radiate. You got some flavor and I'm trying to savor it. Palm gripped on the fruit.